I really need an intro. I don't have an intro. I don't have an intro. Um, so here we are. Hello, YouTube. We're trying something different today. So we normally do gin reviews on this channel uh, once a month. I think I've been pretty good. I've stuck to it most of the last six months or so since I've been a member of the Craft Gin Club. Anyway, park that. We're not here for gin today. We are here for something else. We are here for books. Today is a book review. So I actually got this idea from YouTube's finest, PewDiePie. Uh, yes, I do indeed watch his videos. Uh, I think they're great. I love him. I think he's a wonderful character. Uh, he always makes me laugh, cheers me up, no end. So he's been recently doing book reviews, about once every couple of months. Uh, so obviously you need to read the books and that takes time. So he's been doing book reviews about some of his favourite reads and what he intends to read in the future and I thought they were a great idea and I thought I'll share some of those books that I've been reading with you and they might be something that you find interesting. Uh, if you have any suggestions about books that you think that I might enjoy, uh, leave them down below. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this. Um, so the first one I'm going to do, I've got three books today, um, just sort of a bit of a selection of different things. So the first one I have is um, Dear Old Mary Beard, Women and Power. Um, this was one that I actually read just before Christmas, so I feel like it, it feels like it's a bit bit of a time away ago. But I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about it anyway because I love Mary Beard. I think she's such a wonderful woman. She's so fascinating. She's so interesting, and she just tells a really good story. Um, I actually follow her on Twitter, and I can never get enough of her. I think she's really to me. She's just really really likable. Um, she doesn't seem to care too much what people think I and mean, of course things do get to her sometimes like it would with all of us but um, I don't know I think she just leaves with a lives with a sort of braveness that I appreciate so yeah so I thought I'll include this one um, this is a great book to get started with uh, I've never read any Mary Beard before this um, she's mainly a classicist so most of her books that she has written she's written quite a few but they are on the classics, which I do enjoy, but I'm not sure I could handle a whole uh, book on them. So this was my sort of intro into Mary Beard. Um, the clues in the name, Women in Power. This is actually a sort of brief history of women in power and um, how the world deals with that or not deals with that. It goes all the way back from uh, the classics and Roman times all the way up to modern times. So for example, there's quite a big section on the uh, fairly recent election, Trump versus uh, Clinton. Uh, that's all in there as well. It's very, very fascinating, interesting read um, on the way that the world deals with women in power and how they are often um, vilified or subjected to different standards than men. But it's interesting. It's not like a feminist rant or anything like that, but it is fascinating, um, both I would say for men and for women. Um, it's a nice easy read, it has pictures, and the wording isn't too heavy. Yeah, it's a nice, I actually read this really, really quickly, and I've been passing it around as well, so most of my family have now read it. Really enjoyable book, so that's my first one, Mary Beard. Uh, second one was one that I actually bought when I was Christmas shopping. We're all guilty of that, right? When you go Christmas shopping for other people and you end up picking up something for yourself. Um, so I went into, uh, so for those of you who don't know, I am a Amazon boycotter, so I buy all my books either secondhand from Oxfam Bookshops or from eBay or from uh, Waterstones or a proper bookshop. Independents, big ones, but I don't buy from Amazon. Um, so I was in Waterstones and I found this one. Which, okay, I admit, I will buy a book for its cover. But I think those people that that don't admit to doing that, I think are probably lying because it draws you in. I'm definitely a very visual person, so I love a beautiful cover. I like how it fits with my decor and fits into my home. And this one I just couldn't resist. Um, I love sort of stars in the night sky so when I saw this which is written in the stars it's constellations facts and folklore um, so this book it's not really a ready book you don't sit down and read it one day um, you pick it up and you browse it so this is a perfect one for anyone just to have like sitting around um, and what's really nice about this is the way that the book's actually laid out so in here you've got it breaks the actual um, let me find one for you actually I've got one here so it breaks down the constellations into like stories. So this is the 
Orion set. I think Orion was one of the first constellations that I ever learned when I was little, so most people would have heard of this. Um, so it tells you um, all of the constellations within the story, the folklore of it, gives you a brief introduction to um, that. And then you've got each of the constellations, I've got a lovely page. Now these are really, really beautifully illustrated. Um, I just, it's lovely, it's such a nice book. Um, in each section you've got uh, the family that the constellation lives in, the location where you're likely to find it, when it's best seen, so Orion's best seen in January, which is why you're seeing it a lot this time of year. Um, the name meaning is the hunter, and it also gives you the names of the specific stars that are that make up the constellation as well. And then it talks to you about the folklore of the constellation itself, so how it um, came about and what those myths and stories are all about, which I really love. Um, I love the old stories. I think they are there's a real magic to that, and especially when you see them in the night sky. I just loved it, and like I say, it's a beautiful book. Um, it's actually by Alison Davies, if you want to look it up. Um, but absolutely lovely. I think this one was twelve ninety nine, so not cheap, but it's a really lovely one to pick up. You can have a little browse through, see what you can spot. Absolutely, all of the constellations are in there. Just about the other. Um, so yeah, it's a lovely book. I do really like that one. And like I say, I sort of pick it up and put it up, put it down every so often. Um, it's a really really good read. And then my main book that I've been reading for the last month, and I've only just finished, um, is probably the heaviest of the three. And this is Richard Dawkins, and this is The Magic of Reality. Great book. Um, I've read uh, a couple of Dawkins in the past, not for a long time, um, but he is a very interesting read, definitely. Um, I'm not going to go into too much about him because it will definitely potentially divide, divide opinions, and that's not what we're about today. Uh, but what this is about, well, I want to... Uh, <laughs> words that might help um, so what I'll do is I'll read you at the back and that will give you an idea of this book okay um, so the clearest and most beautifully written introduction to science I've ever read that's by Philip Pullman so that's true this is a such a good intro to the really important key things about life and the universe and everything that might be going on with it and essentially the magic in it okay so while I love science I've read a lot of good science books, not just, you know, pick up throwaway bestsellers, but um, I've read a lot of science, um, mathematical books, uh, physics books, all that kind of stuff. I find it absolutely fascinating. Um, and what's really nice about this is that I would like to say that any beginner, anybody that has any, any understanding at all of uh, science would really get on with this. It's a really actual, really easy read, okay? so. I'm going to read the back. So magic takes many forms. The ancient Egyptians explained the night <clears throat> by suggesting that the goddess Nut swallowed the sun. The Vikings believed a rainbow was the god's bridge to earth. These are magical, extraordinary tales, but there is another kind of magic and it lies in the exhilaration of discovering the real answers to these questions. It is the magic of reality, of science. That's the key. So what's really nice about this is that it covers some, uh, so it's 12 topics and it's what is reality, who was the first person, why are there so many different kinds of animals, what are things made of, why do we have night and day, winter and summer, what is the sun, what is a rainbow, when and how did everything begin, are we alone, what is an earthquake, why do bad things happen and what is a miracle. So really interesting things and the way that it starts each chapter is that it talks about the myth behind it. So it takes inspiration from myths and folklore from all over the world and combinations of them and shows how they, a lot of them are actually linked together, um, but also then how that's come about and how that might develop over the years and over the centuries. And then it talks about the actual science behind it. So why things happen. Um, it goes into just enough detail that you feel like you can really understand it and you could expand upon it, but it's not so deep that you, it leads off into a massive tangent and you, you know, just becomes either white noise or you, you can't actually take it all in. So was, I really enjoyed this book. I think it's fascinating. Um, for anybody that likes, you know, staring at the wonder of a rainbow, this is going to be a really good read for you. It's absolutely great. Um, like I say, I love Richard Dawkins. He does write a couple of good books. Um, so if you get into this, pick up a few of his others. Um, I always go to the... Uh, 
book sections where it's sort of mind widening kind of social sciences and theoretical science and you can pick up some great books in there um, all about the universe and us and you just read the back of a few and it'll give you some ideas. So those are my three books that I've um, been reading over the last I suppose month just about if we include the berry beard. Um, I think this was something that I really wanted to work on this year. Um, with my New Year's resolutions, I don't really like taking things away. I like to add something in. It feels more positive and it feels more achievable. So for me this year, it was about reading more and committing to the books that I'm reading and also finish the books that I'm nearly halfway through. I've got quite a few of them. There's about five books that I started last year and I just didn't finish. I just ended up buying a new book. Um, I'm not going to say what they are because I don't want to discredit any of the authors or make it feel like they were boring books. I think it was just about my attention to them and my attention span and maybe a lacking in self-discipline. So that's something that I'm going to be working on this year. So uh, I hope you liked this. It's a bit different, I know, from gin, but I just thought I'd give you a yeah, bit of an insight into what I've been reading. And I'll try and do another one maybe the end of February if I manage to get through another book. I really hope I will. Um, so yeah, gives you a bit of an understanding. I would say that anybody should read more. You can learn so much from any subject that you have a vague interest in. You can take it at your own pace and you can do it privately. So if, if something that you want to do that you think you can't understand or anything, just try it just have a go, pick up a book on it and see how you get on. Um, you will find that you'll learn so much. And not only that, but it improves your vocabulary, it improves your spelling, it improves so much about yourself. So I wish everyone would do more reading. Um, and don't always buy from Amazon. I'm not gonna massively preach to you on that one, but just think where your money is going and make sure it's going into the right place. Uh, preferably people that pay taxes. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's it from me uh, this evening. I'm gonna head over to Twitter to get on with uh, Friday Night Frills, which should be going live fairly shortly. And yeah, good night.